Hi, I'm Ivana from Fairview, who looked at lung capacity um, on the back of swimming research. So Ivana, do you want to talk us through your project? Yeah, sure. So um, our project was investigating the effects of two different breathing methods on a bunch of competitive swimmers in, the, in a swimming and life-saving club. The two methods we practiced were diaphragmatic breathing, which is basically breathing through, through your diaphragm as opposed to the chest. Um, and the second method then is a method called steps. So it's basically um, you're pitching your nose, holding your breath, walking up and down, and you're trying to take as many steps as you can um, while holding your breath. And we hope that over time the amount of steps that you can take would increase to show that you're able to hold your breath longer and your CO2 tolerance would improve. So Rory, do you want to talk me through uh, what your findings were and what, what, you, what you considered the results to be? Uh, so basically the diaphragmatic breathing group, they found that they were more rested, they could sleep better. It's a me method used in yoga and pilates. It's a relaxation method. It's a more efficient way of breathing. They found they were more rested, they, could train, they were more energetic during the day, more concentrated, and then as a result they could train better. Uh, the, steps, uh, the steps group who were practicing the walking breath holds, it's, uh, it can be used as a treatment for asthma as well. So they found that they were able to hold their breath underwater for longer, uh, their dives were better, and they could turn off the water faster and things like that. Um, Basically, they were less dependent on oxygen and their CO2 tolerance was higher. 90% of the people in the steps group found a direct Im improvement in their performance and 80% of the diaphragmatic breathing group found a direct improvement in their performance. Okay, so here we are with Chris who investigated different sports and their effects on asthma. Chris, you want to explain what you did? Uh, so I was, as you said, investigating the benefits of different sports for asthmatics. So I set up six-week exercise programs in swimming, football and basketball and um, basically uh, tested the lung function before and after and their quality of life. Basically, I found that swimming was the most beneficial form of, for a form of exercise. All the people you tested were, were asthmatic. asthmatic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What were the different exercise programs that were put uh, in? So they did uh, six-week exercise programs. This was once a week for 40 minutes, and um, basically they did different. They did aerobic work, they did sprint work, and different dynamic kind of games and that kind of thing. What were the results then? Did it do with lung capacity? Uh, so the swimmers had uh, the most significant increase in lung function uh, in four different areas of the six that I looked at compared to two in basketball and one in football. The control group then who didn't do any exercise didn't have any change in their lung function. And you're summarising that the better the lung capacity the more likely you are better. to battle through asthma? Exactly, yeah. And also the swimmers had the biggest increase in uh, quality of life which is probably at least as important as lung function. Okay, I'm here with Harry Kearns who investigated the air pollution in Dublin uh, 27 years ago and today. So Harry, do you want to talk us through what you did? Yeah, so basically my uh, project is comparing the air quality 27 years ago to today um, using lichens as bioindicators. So basically uh, 27 years ago, 1988, a study was done investigating the air quality of the Dublin area. And there were many areas, especially in the centre, where uh, no lichens at all were recorded. And then in 1992, two years later, a uh, smoky coal bomb was introduced. So uh, smoky coal, um, it's, when it's burned, it releases sulfur dioxide, so lots of sulfur content in the coal. Uh, why were lichens used as indicators? Because uh, lichens are, can be used as indicators, so they, they, different species will, will grow in different uh, air quality, so different levels of SO2, so they can tolerate different levels of SO2. Um, so basically, 25 years later, 2015, I wanted to uh, see if the, if the air, uh, smoky coal ban has been successful in reducing the SO2 levels. And the ultimate finding was better air in Dublin Definitely or worse air in Dublin? Air. Definitely better air, yeah. Um, so some areas where no lichens recorded had loads of lichen growth, such as here in Tala. Uh, and then I also looked at the nitrogen oxide levels, uh, which hadn't been done before, so it's kind of a standalone uh, part of this, the survey. But um, we've still got quite high nitrogen levels, nitrogen oxide levels. Uh, did any of the areas get worse? No, not, not compared to the previous survey for the sulfur dioxide levels. It's all good.